In this episode, I'm speaking with Shaban Farr, who is the Spark originator for Digital Nomad Beyond 50 Network. Shaban is on a journey and she wants to take others along with her on that journey in traveling the world all while making a living. Now, special announcement, this is the last podcast episode of 2022 as I'm taking a two-week break from producing this podcast. Cue the music. Welcome to the Repurpose Your Career podcast brought to you by Career Pivot. This podcast is where those of us in the second half of life come together to discuss how to repurpose our careers for the 21st century. Come listen to career experts give you proven strategies. Listen to people like you tell their stories on how they repurpose their careers. And finally, get your questions answered. Your host, Mark Miller, has made six career pivots over the last 30 years. He understands this is not about jumping out of the frying pan into a fire, but rather to create a plan where you make clear, actionable steps or pivots to a better future career. Are you ready to repurpose your career? Welcome to episode 301 of the Repurpose Your Career podcast. My name is Mark Miller, and I'll be your host every Monday for discussion on what it's like to repurpose your career. In this episode, I'm speaking with Shabon Farr who is the spark originator for Digital Nomad Beyond 15 Network. Shaban is on a journey, and she wants to take others along with her on that journey in traveling the world, all while making a living. I was directed to Shaban by one of the Career Pivot community members. Shaban manages the Digital Nomad Beyond 15 Network Facebook group, which is a thriving group of over a 1,000 members who are either our digital nomads or want to be digital nomads. Let me read Shaban's bio. 2019, Shaban started selling off 30 years of her Dallas, Texas life to begin her nomad years, the 4th of March, 2020. When her initial three weeks in Ecuador stretched to 13 months due to the COVID lockdown, she pivoted her plans to market and manage her business remote. The search for others who are Older location independence led her to become the spark and the originator of Digital Nomads Beyond 50. DNB50 is an online community for people in their late 40s and over who currently travel, work, and plan to or are just curious about this life. Shaban turned to her previous profession in corporate learning and development to organize the DNB50 Virtual Summit June of 2021. In June of 2022, they hosted in Medellin, Colombia, the first digital nomad co-live work specifically designed for older nomads. Shaban is a home-free digital nomad with no permanent base. She wants to inspire others to banish the belief that it's too late to reinvent themselves. Her motto, flip the page and the future is still unwritten. Hope you like that. However, before we get to the episode, let's have a word from our sponsor, Career Pivot. The Career Pivot membership community is a group of people from all over the U.S. and Canada with diverse backgrounds. This community where everyone is there to help everyone else out, figure out what they want to do in the second half of life, and then make it happen. Many have made changes that they did not know existed or was possible when they came to the community. They learned from each other, broadened their horizons on what was really possible. Let's hear what David had to say about being part of the community. What I have gotten out of the career pivot community is really two phases. The first phase, I was employed, but then I lost my job for almost seven months. So the career pivot community helped me, frankly, get my head on straight to have the right attitude. It helped me go through a methodical reassessment and a process to find employment, which I did. So that was very helpful. And that's why I continue to stay. The second phase is since that time, I have since retired. So it's a a slightly different phase, but the career pivots community still provides ideas, engagement, frankie camaraderie. For me also, the bottom line is it's you're not alone out there. You have other people that give you ideas and perspectives and frankly support. So that's why 
I really enjoy and like the career pivot community. I'm recruiting new members. If you are interested more about the endeavor, please go to careerpivot.com slash community. Now on to my discussion with Shaban Farr. Welcome to the Repurpose Your Career podcast. I have the real joy of having Shaban Farr on the podcast, and she is the owner of Digital Nomads Beyond 50 Network. Welcome to the podcast, Shaban. Thank you so much, Mark. I am so pleased to be here. You say the owner, but I actually prefer to call myself, the title that I've given myself is the spark originator of Digital Nomads Beyond 50, because it was a spark of that I experienced myself that made me say, ah, oh, this is a need that I might be able to fill for people. So <laughs> I'm the spark originator. I was introduced to Siobhan's Facebook group, Digital Nomads Beyond 50, by somebody in my online community. Actually, it was uh, uh, Debbie Schnur, who's been on the podcast. And because she's thinking of being a digital nomad, that's a discussion we've been talking about oh. in the group. And I can give them my perspective, but I wanted Siobhan to give her perspective. So Siobhan... Why don't you start at the beginning? Tell us your story. A little bit ahead of having that th that idea. I've always loved travel. In the early 20s, uh, 2000, and 2000, uh, 2000 and 2002, lived in London. We had an opportunity to do a massive amount of traveling during that period of time. My daughter, who's now 24, she was two when we went. And by the time we came back, when she was four years old, she'd been to 24 countries. It just re you know, reinstilled in me how much I love travel, particularly outside of the United States. And we actually wanted to continue living in London, but it just didn't work out. Fast forward, you know, divorce. My daughter is getting ready to graduate from with her undergraduate degree at that time in 2020. As a result of the divorce, instead of going back into corporate learning and development, which had been my career for some 15 some years, I had wanted to, she was only 10 when the divorce happened. I wanted to continue being able to provide her the support as a mother that I, that she had gotten used to. So I knew that meant self-employed and it's being self-employed and being an entrepreneur is something that's a part of my family. I'm half Jamaican. If you're not having, you know, three jobs going at the same time, you're a, a slacker. <laughs> so and also my Belizean side as well, too. Got to give caduce to that. But the, the point is, is that I decided to be self-employed. I knew that if I went into sales, no one's going to put a cap on my income. And also I would have the opportunity to, if as I discovered about with health insurance, build residual income. And that was in 2009 that I started that career. And um, and now I'm to the point where the work that I do, I specialize in Medicare and affordable health care. And it allows me to, I it dawned on me that I didn't have to just wait until I had two week windows of time to travel. That since the marketing period for the work that I do it's a very distinct time of the year. It's, I have to be in Dallas basically September through December. And then I can travel the rest of the eight months of the year and collect my residual incomes on a monthly basis at the same time that I'm still serving my clients, either through Zoom, phone, et cetera. And at the end of 2018, you know, there was a lot that was going on that was, uh, kind of prodding me to stop thinking about it, to start doing it. In 2019, I'm a I'm a person who jumps in both feet. <laughs> and then I look to see how deep the water is. <laughs> so um, I started selling off all of my stuff because I decided that the most reasonable and affordable way to do this was going to be to stop paying almost $2,000 a month for my apartment in Dallas and become a home-free digital nomad, except for my friends who I 
you know, dearly love here in Dallas, I didn't have connections that would force me to keep a home here any any longer. I spent 2019 making my preparations, selling off 30 years of my life here in Dallas. And the 4th of March, 2020, I left for my first year as being a nomad. My intention was not so much being, I didn't really think about it as being a digital nomad until I found myself locked in Quito, Ecuador. I arrived in Quito the night that was supposed to be my last of three weeks in Ecuador. And that was also the night that the country locked down for COVID. And um, to make a long story short, that three-week stay that was supposed to be my first country of six countries that year, 2020, I ended up staying in Quito for 13 months. When people who even today, they said, oh, that's right. I remember when you were stuck in Quito, in Ecuador, and I always correct them. I said, I was not stuck in Ecuador. I took shelter. I took shelter in Ecuador in comparison to what you folks were going through in the United States. It was literally a much safer place from a COVID lockdown. They took they took the small country advantage. And in fact, when I did finally have to leave because the visa, the grace period extension on the visa had finally truly ran out. I truly had to force myself to leave because I had felt so sheltered there. It was hard for me to consider um, going, but I had to. But while I was there, Mark, AEP, annual enrollment period for 2020 was looming. And I had asked my doctor's Um, particularly my rheumatoid arthritis doctor, my rheumatologist, whether I should consider coming back to Dallas because of the fact that, you know, it's a, that's the heavy marketing period. And she told me, you're just going to need to figure out how to market and get new clients from Ecuador, because as your doctor, I cannot in good faith advise you to come back, whether you, whether you, um, whether you make money with your new digital marketing plan, you know you go to that you t- that you c- could create, or whether you lose money, the only answer is that you have to stay there. There was no vaccine at that time. Remember, I started working on a digital no, you know, digital marketing plan and putting that together and advertising on Facebook and all that type of thing. And I, it occurred to me that hmm, if this works. I may never have to go back to Dallas. It didn't quite work out that way, but, um, but uh, because marketing for this still it's, it's best to do it in person, but it did force me to look at myself and to start to see me as something I thought was only for the young, you know, the, the thirties and the forties and the, or the, for that matter, the twenties and the, those in the twenties and their, and and their, and their thirties and, and to see myself as a digital nomad. And then I went out looking to see, well, who else is out there that's in this older age? Digital nomads beyond, beyond 50 really came about first because I was looking for other people to get advice from, people who were in a similar age group. I couldn't find any. And so I started the Facebook group because I also thought that um, that we could form a community for ourselves. One of the other things that I did to just simply find a community to be a part of was I tried to join a co-live co-work in the next country that I was going to. It was scheduled to be in um, in Colombia. That was my next c- country that I was going to. And this was one of the larger co-live co-work organizations in the United in the world. And when I put in my application, one of the things that you had to do when was to select your age group. When I clicked on 45 plus, I got a pop-up message that said, and very nicely, but very direct, <laughs> you know, we are not, we're not prepared to accommodate that age group, but we'll keep your information on file. And when we get to that point, we will reach out to you and see if you might be interested. Once again, being a bit of the entrepreneur and very social, I had, I left, I closed the meetup group in Dallas that I'd had for nine years and had about 1500 members at the time that I closed it because I knew that I was going to be living outside of the country. And so I said, huh, this sounds like times to 
put together a social network around this. And that's how Digital Nomads Beyond 50 got started. As more and more people joined, I realized that the majority of the people who were joining were people who were also looking for answers. And so I started going out to find people who were more expert than just my experience as well. And I put together a summit. Since nobody was traveling, it was a virtual summit and it was scheduled. We held hosted it for three days in June. As a result of that, we attracted a lot more members and we've continued to grow. Um, in Medellin this year, we had our first co live co work. And now we are up to, we're more than a thousand members. And so I'm, which I'm very proud of. I'm very ex excited about that. And because it allows us to be able to do more with the group than, um, than before when you have a smaller group, we're having wonderful conversations on online within the group, people asking questions and, and it's, it's, it's really turning into the community that I had envisioned. Shabon. You're more than over 50. Yes, I am. As of right now, I am 66. <laughs> I am. 66. That's right. One people, we are, we are almost exactly the same age. <laughs> One of my goals here is to make you a role model. Oh, thank you. <laughs> when you're having these discussions and in, inside of your Facebook group, mm -hmm. what are the biggest concerns that people have? Well, they range, Mark. They range from like, for instance, there was um, a question that was just posted about how do you do with how do you deal with medications and getting prescription filled while you were traveling? Frankly, this to me, I was I was so literally I'm delighted to see these type of questions because these are not the types of questions that you what people will pose in a group for the younger digital nomads. And of course, we actually do have younger digital. We have some people in their 30s and early 40s. And the reason why it's beyond 50 was, you know, because that's a good number. But yeah, these are the types of questions that people are asking and getting response to, as well as like the general questions. I heard that, um, you know, that access to Cambodia sometimes can be difficult getting a visa. What's the process with that? You know, that's a, a general digital nomad. But then, and there are also questions like, I really want to do this because uh, the majority of our folks are people who very much want to be digital nomads, but they just don't know how to get started. Or they may not have the support, or they think they may not have the support because they haven't put it out there to the people who they know and love who are part of their, you know, their their life. What we sometimes often do is have the opportunity to really put information in the hands of our members that allow, give them the resources to embolden them to say, hey, this is something that I want to do. And um and I'm getting I'm I'm being able to put little by little, I'm being able to put the pieces together of how I want to do this. But that is sparked by the questions that people are asking and the conversations. And sometimes it's kind of, I think one of my most favorite was a reason I, I we recently posted what was your most memorable experience celebrating a holiday out away from your home country? We got a lot of uh, just wonderful conversations. And even those, some of the, you know, some, some of those comments that people were sharing their experience were just so amazing and inspiring to help spark other people. Because I would say that a good 60% of our members are actually people who are wanting to become digital nomads, planning to become digital nomads. And, and that has kind of extended to a change that we're going to make for 2023 to our co-live co-work. But that is really where we are as a group. And it's a safe place for people to ask these types of questions and not feel foolish or that someone's going to like <laughs> you know, poke fun of them for some reason or whatever. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know whether you, you can probably hear or see the smile in my voice because I am really delighted with the way that this that this community, not a group, we call it the network, Digital Nomads Network, but it really is evolving into a true community mark, and people are very supportive of each other. You know, in this community, yeah, yeah. One of the things that 
I see and I was drawn to this is the fact that you learn from others um, in your summit. I watched a couple of videos. You had the one woman who was doing on finance mm-hmm. and she's a, who was a corporate banker. Yep. Uh-huh. You get a lot of people who just make the assumption that I will go someplace and I'll still be able to use my credit card everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And the answer is no. <laughs> and it's like, I'm in the right now, I'm in the process of buying a new car. Mm-hmm. And so I'm transferring money to Mexico and I'm doing it $5,000 at a time. Oh, wow. <laughs> over wise, uh, because I don't want to attract attention of, you know, uh, regulators, but you make all the assumptions that it'll be like in the U S Yes. And your your prescription stuff is a classic example, and I've I've done a number of podcast episodes about that. Is most of our experience with dealing with healthcare is how it's done in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody does it the way the U.S. does it. No, and actually, that's sometimes a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, I. <laughs> that is sometimes a good thing. Yeah. Oh, I I've been my wife who's a retired registered nurse has been thrilled with the healthcare here. And you know, as being a member of Digital Nomads Beyond 50, I had my own personal experience with the healthcare system outside of the United States when I landed in the hospital for five days in Medellin, Colombia. And um, it may seem strange to say, but I'm so glad that it happened there rather than in the United States, because I might have been sent home to die, basically. Um, Not that they would have thought that I was going to die, but my level of dehydration forced the hospital to, they they admitted me to the hospital. Um, and in the United States, they are so quick to send you home from the emergency room that I'm, I needed IV and that would have not happened in, in the United States. So literally being in Colombia when that happened saved my life, I feel, or at least it saved my kidneys. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So what are what are your plans for your co-live co-work for the, this this next year? Well, in 2023, as I mentioned, um this is like a, a whole lot of the things I do best coming together. <laughs> um in the sense that as a result of having the first co-live co-work which was for 4 weeks, And we ended up having to break it into, for some people, um, For we had nine participants and four of them were actual full-time nomads. The other five were people who were planning. And the best that they could do was take off two weeks at a time. At the most, they could take off. So we had people, we broke it down to people coming the first and the second week and the third and the fourth week. The next learning experience from Medellin from our Medellin uh, Columbia co live co work was that people wanted to have a plan, something to help them make this change. They enjoy the experience of, you know, doing some works, you know, some work kind of took vacation time, but they try to do some work just to get an idea of what it feels like. You know, nobody had a plan. We also saw some of our participants who were saying after they came up the hill to to where our guest house was, Man, I didn't realize I was in such bad shape. I really need to get, I need to lose some weight, get, you know, strengthen my stamina or whatever. And then there were people who were talking about what kind of business that they might want to do. They may be able to transition the work that they were doing now, but some people were saying, you know what? I think I might try to start a side gig that I can grow into at least a secondary and maybe at some point a primary source of income. But I need to, it would be nice to have some assistance with that. So basically, as I mentioned before, my background before health insurance was in corporate learning and development, which I did. And I spent many, many years doing any everywhere from staff to executive development and retreats um, during that period of time, travel retreats for the executives as well, and helping people to identify their skills But in this case, helping people to identify maybe first, what kind of a digital nomad do you want to be, at least to start with? And are you prepared? Are you prepared emotionally? Are you prepared physically? Are you prepared financially to make this change? And if not, 
what do you need to put in place to make it happen? And so as a result of thinking that through, we now have the Digital Nomad Beyond 50 Life Map Retreat. And that's going to be the first week right now. It's tentatively scheduled from the 30th of, of April through the 7th of May and in Portugal. And that's going to be the first week of, um, of our co-live co-work. So for those people, they're explorer, I call them explorer digital nomads, their co-work, so to speak, as a part of this, is going to be creating their own personal plan to becoming a digital nomad. It's going to be a concentrated period of time where for five mornings, three hours a morning, there's going to be concentrated um, discussion learning. We're going to have subject matter experts come in on the preparedness elements, as that I just mentioned, as far as emotional, physical, and uh, financial preparedness, business coaching, as as well as fun time. You know, the afternoon and the evenings will be the fun time. But at the same time, people will be creating, and I, I put the emphasis on their personal path, because they are truly so many ways. It's not, uh, some people think you got to sell everything and, you know, sell your home and all that. That's one, that's one end. And then the other end is like maybe saying, okay, I'm going to take this month and I'm going to travel a specific country and work while I'm doing that. And then maybe next year it's three months and then maybe it's six months, or maybe you do make the leap because that one month was so engaging and so invigorating for you that you say, I need to have more of this, you know, the life map retreat, people will come saying, how do I get started? They'll arrive. How do I get started? And they will leave with a plan They can decide whether it's a three-month plan, four-month, or a full-year plan, but they also will leave with a community because very similar to when we hosted the first Co-Live Co-Work, we started having Zoom happy hours before everybody showed up in Medellin so they can start to get to know each other. They can bring their coffee or their wine, depending on what time of the day it was for them. And um, and then we also had a WhatsApp stream where people started communicating with each other before they arrived. Well, there will be a Zoom and a WhatsApp stream specifically for the Life Map Retreat folks, because after the Life Map Retreat, this continue is going to con- this uh, community will continue to support each other. They'll cheer each other on with the when when people reach the milestones in their once again very individual plans. They're different plans, but they all have the similar destination to be a successful digital nomad, to sustainably travel your life and enjoy it in an enriching manner. And whether and some people are. I just want to also point out that not all digital nomads travel abroad. They are people who choose to just do be domestic as well as some people who just want to, you know, I love the international travel. So, and then some people do a hybrid. Our participants will leave with uh, that plan in place, a community of support. We are also offering accountability sessions. I want to come up with a better name than accountability sessions, but we'll still be getting together in Zoom as a community to talk about how you doing, um, where are you with your plan? Even if you haven't made an accomplishment, you may get inspiration from people who have reached some of their goals, et cetera. And not only do we going to be cheering each other on, but also um, they'll also be, you know, people who are going to be, you know, encouraging each other when they do stumble, you know, in, in, in with their goals. And then the same day that those groups, that that group is leaving, we will have the more typical co-live, co-work peep folks arriving. These are going to be what we call the experienced digital nomads the ones that have been doing it for some time, and they're just looking for a social break from what is, except, you know, there are a few couples. I haven't met many digital nomad couples, frankly. And it's a very solo 
yes, enriching, delightful in, on so many levels life, but it is very solo and it can get a little lonely. In fact, if you read any article about being a digital nomad, no matter what age, they'll talk about the greatest challenge being the solo isol- the, the, the social isolation. And that's not I mean, when you go to a country, you meet people and so on and so forth, but the social isolation from people who are are traveling through life the same way that you are is what people crave and look forward to enjoying when they do have a co-live, co-work. And I absolutely enjoyed when I was in Medellin at the day, at the end of the day, someone um, said, hey, I'm going to be going to so-and-so Olivia's for dinner. Who wants to join me? And the rest of us all head on down there as well, too. And, And at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just nice having other people who are with you. We're only going to be doing it for two weeks, at least this next year, instead of the four weeks, because once again, that seems to be the time frame that works best for even the experienced digital nomads, but for a different reason. And I got and it's kind of funny. It then this kind also reflects on the age group that we're working with. And we're talking about people, hey, you know, I get into my own pattern, I have my own way of thing doing a way of doing things and so on and so forth, because that's kind of the age that we are in. And and so some of the feedback when I heard, should it be two weeks, should it be four weeks? People were saying, I like the idea, but I'm not ready to commit to four weeks to be with a group of people who I haven't met before. So the two weeks works well because they're digital nomads. If they are enjoying each other's company, and they will, because that's how it worked out in Medellin. If they're enjoying it, when they're enjoying each other's company, they'll say, hey, we're wrapping up on the on Sunday, the 21st of May. I'm thinking about going to Croatia. Who wants to come with me? There we go. You know, so that's kind of, I hope that I painted enough of a picture of what this is experience is going to be like for people, two different communities with two different needs being fulfilled. Back in 2018, I interviewed Barbara Weebel, who owns holeinadonut.com. She's one of the top baby boomer uh, travel bloggers. Ah, uh-huh. And she had gone completely Houseless, I don't call homeless, houseless. Home home free. Home free. Yeah, home free. <laughs> is what I call myself. Uh, but, she, <laughs> but she eventually decided to settle down in Chiang Mai, Thailand, because she just couldn't handle lugging all her stuff with her everywhere. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so now she bases out of there. And if I'll put I'll uh put links to the two interviews I did with her. Please One do. uh in the in 2018, before the pandemic, and then we did an encore episode uh, where I wanted her talking about travel in the post-COVID world. Shabon, this has been great. How do they reach out and find out more about uh, Digital Nomads Beyond 50? Well, first is to jump, as I call, say, jump into the conversation, jump into the convo at um, Digital Nomads Beyond 50 Network. And I you need to, um, if you just, if somebody just goes into Facebook and puts in Digital Nomads Beyond 50, they may also see the page, which is less of a conversation that's more resource and, inf- you know, just some pops of information. And the first thing they'll see is that you found the page, now join the network group because at, at this link, because that is where the conversation is going on. And also um, to go to digitalnomadsbeyond50.com. That is the website that will be hosting the information for the retreat come the end of January, beginning of February is when all of the pieces will be put together and the new web page will be up dedicated to the retreat information, the retreat information, as well as the co-live, co-work information in Portugal. That I, I think I mentioned, I should mention that it is going to be in Portugal next year. And so they can get there, they can um, 
you know, uh, subscribe, sign up for, you know, to get information and uh, updates. And as soon as we start, because of course, we're going to have early bird special, or as I like to call it, since we are digital, early adapter specials for, for those who um, who hop on it very quickly, because especially the retreat is, it's not going to be a large group, because it's going to be a very intimate conversation about people's goals. Goals. So we are going to have a maximum of possibly just 12 to 15 people. So it, particularly if they're interested in that, they will want to, to register early. But that's how. And, and they can either find us once again at digitalnomadsbeyond50.com or if you just put in dnb 50 Dot com that will also redirect you to the the more wordy URL. <laughs> and we will put links to all of that in the show notes. Thank you so much, Mark. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the opportunity to literally talk about my favorite subject. I get I I get so very excited about um everything that's ahead for this group. And the other thing too is you'd mentioned the summit and uh so much of that information is still the you saw on YouTube the introductions of all the speakers. But the next thing that we're going to be doing, since so much of that information is still extraordinarily relevant, and we had like 30 presenters, uh, 30 speakers. So we're going to be putting all of that information available for on an evergreen opportunity for people to spend like maybe $50, $40 or whatever, and have access to that, that money going into helping us with the co-live co-work as well too and the cost of getting that up and going but um all of those videos are going to be available on a paper you know pay-per-view the whole package will be available people want some information about that just subscribe on the web page and they'll be getting all they'll be getting information about that as well too yeah one of the things i want to encourage people to do is go get your information from reliable sources. Absolutely. One of the problems I see in the Facebook groups here in, in Mexico is you get people asking immigration questions and they're, and you have people who offer their opinions as fact, as fact, <laughs> yeah, which they're not. Mm -hmm. And my response is whenever people ask Medicare or immigration questions, I say for Medicare, go find a Medicare expert. For immigration, go for, go to find an immigration lawyer. They're not that expensive. And Absolutely the true. information you find in a lot of these Facebook groups, are as, it's as good as the money you're paying for it. Yes, indeed. Nothing. Yes, indeed. So find, finding good, reliable sources is absolutely critical. So, Shaban? Thank you very much for being on the Repurpose Your Career podcast. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me. And it's been delightful um, meeting you this way, Mark. And uh, I will keep keep you updated on how things are progressing. And I, I so appreciate your support. I hope you felt Shaban's enthusiasm for this endeavor. If this is of interest, check out her Facebook group. I will have links to all of what she discussed in the show notes. Take a moment, go to careerpivot.com, sign up for the weekly Career Pivot Insights newsletter, which is sent out every Sunday. You'll get a weekly update on this podcast, white papers, and new blog posts. I just published my latest white paper, Ageism, The Last Acceptable Bias. While there, do not forget to check out the Career Pivot community, which can be found at careerpivot.com slash community. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Look for Career Pivot on Facebook and LinkedIn. You'll also find me on Twitter at Career Pivot. Yeah, I'm still, I still have an ID. I'm not tweeting anymore. Thank you for listening all the way to the end of the Repurpose Your Career podcast. You will find all the show notes at careerpivot.com slash episode 301. You can also subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Podbeam, Overcast, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, and lots of other places where podcasts can be found. 
In fact, this podcast can be found on the Repurpose Your Career podcast channel on YouTube. Hope to see you on the Monday after New Year's for another episode of Repurpose Your Career podcast.